Hello and welcome to the Open Heat Transfer Course Conduction. This course is brought to you by RWTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilco Rolfs and in this video we will look at the dimensionless number called bio number. The learning goals in this video are a fundamental understanding of dimensionless numbers, especially here the bio number, which characterizes the dominant thermal resistance between a conductive and a convective resistance of a body. This allows us to simplify multidimensional heat conduction problems based on the problem defining thermal resistance. Now let us look at one example here. The question is which thermal resistance are relevant? So what happens in the example? We have here a rod between two adiabatic walls, which means that there is no heat transfer from this rod into the wall on both sides. Then we have a lighter with a heating and in this way we can heat up the one side of the rod. We look at a steady state condition, which means that the entire heat that we bring in here on this side will be conducted away to the other side and on its way it will be released to the ambience by convection. So the question is what thermal resistances are important in this process? So of course we have the conduction here, so there is definitely a thermal resistance of um, uh, a conductive resistance and then on the other side we have here convection. But it can also be that there is a heat conduction in the radial direction. So it might be that there is a severe influence on and a variation of the radial temperature profile. So let's look how to characterize that and how to distinguish between the cases where there is a resistance or there is no resistance. But first let's try to develop the temperature profile, the one-dimensional temperature profile, based on the image that we have here. So we see that on this side here heat is um, introduced into the body, so the highest temperature of our object will be here on the left side. Because there is no heat transfer to the outside here, because it, the lighter is so close to the wall, we expect that the maximum is directly here on the adiabatic wall. We also know that due to the fact that the wall is adiabatic, there's no heat transfer across the wall, so the temperature profile needs to be constant here. The same applies to the other side of the adiabatic wall, the heat transfer, uh, the um, temperature profile also in, on this location is constant, there's zero gradient. So next, how is the shape of the curve? Why is it shaped in this way? On the left side, we have a high temperature. Let's assume that the ambient temperature is constant, which means that the driving potential between the temperature of the rod and the ambient is highest here on the left side, which means that there is a higher amount of heat transferred to the ambient by convection on the left side than on the right side. This translates to the fact that the temperature gradient here on the left side is higher than the temperature gradient here on the right side. Now we will look into the rod and see how the temperature might change in, a, in, a, on, in the inner side. So one possibility is that the temperature profile in radial direction is established as shown here in this picture. So the highest temperature is here in the center and then the temperature becomes colder to the outside because we have here the convective transport to the environment. Now the question is, can we neglect the temperature changes in radial direction or is the temperature almost homogeneous compared to the temperature differences towards the environment? So let's look at that part and let's discuss this. Which thermal resistance are relevant? We can look now at this cylinder. We make it a little bit larger and see 
what happens here. So we have on the one side here, on the outside, the convective heat transfer towards the ambience that we can define with a heat transfer coefficient and the temperature difference t between the surface temperature and the ambient temperature. So we describe this resistance by the thermal conduct, uh, by the heat transfer coefficient alpha. It, on the inner side, we have heat conduction determined by the thermal conductivity of the material and of course by the size of the cylinder, so the radius has some kind of influence. If we try to draw the radial temperature profile, we can make use of the symmetry boundary condition, which means that across the symmetry part there is no heat being transferred, so the temperature gradient here at r equal to zero is zero. It is thus going in here in a straight line. Now the temperature decreases over the radius. The temperature gradient also increases, so this becomes a little bit questionable to what we had before as we have seen the radius um, um, the temperature through a cylinder which means that there was always the cur concave shape curve here it's a different shaped curve because we assume that heat is transferred from the uh, axial direction and thus the heat flux increases to the outer side and because of the increasing heat flux, we have an increasing temperature gradient. But we come to that in the, well, we have seen that already in the um, lectures with the heat source in the inner side. So on the other side here, on the outside, we have the convective resistance. So we have two different resistances. One here, inner side, with the temperature jump of um, T of R, and T surface, and we have the other side, the T surface to T ambience. Now let's change the case a little bit. We had first case one, and now we look at a cylinder which is equal from its dimension, but which has a higher thermal conductivity. Like this could be stainless steel, this is now aluminum or copper. So the thermal resistance inside the body reduces which in our figure of the temperature profile translates to the fact that the temperature drop inside the object becomes smaller and the temperature drop outside becomes larger because we assume that the temperature at the r equal to zero and the temperature in the, of the ambience remain constant between the two different cases. So looking at that here for case two, the thermal resistance or the temperature poten uh, the jump in the temperature potential inside is lower than the difference of temperature outside. This is a case if we change the thermal conductivity. Now let's look at another case. Let's just reduce the diameter of the problem. And here the same applies as we have seen before. If we reduce the um, diameter, the heat does not need to travel such a long distance anymore meaning that also the thermal resistance inside the body in radial direction decreases and the same, the temperature uh, drop inside the body becomes smaller compared to the temperature drop outside. So exactly the same applies. Now let's look at case number four. Here we change the heat transfer coefficient on the outside. So the thermal resistance increases on the outside and again, the same applies, the temperature drop in the body becomes less dominant compared to the temperature drop outside, because now we have a higher thermal resistance on the outside. Now we have seen three different quantities and they all affect the temperature profile or in a more specific way, the ratio between the temperature drop inside the body and the temperature drop outside the body. These three quantities now can be combined to one dimensionless number. A dimensionless number is always a comparison between forces or energies. And in this case here, it's a comparison between resistances. If we divide two resistances by each other, the dimension of the 
variable becomes uh, there's a it becomes non-dimensional and as such a dimensionless number so let's see how we define this dimensionless number here so here we have the two resistances inside and out at the body so the thermal resistance inside the body comes in the nominator and the thermal resistance outside the body comes in the denominator so Expressing the thermal resistance inside the body now with the characteristic length L divided by lambda and outside 1 divided by alpha, we can rearrange that so that the bio number is equal to the thermal heat transfer coefficient times the length divided by lambda. Please bear in mind that this here is a right definition coming from the resistances and now the alpha, which is initially below in the denominator, is now here in the denominator. One important part to the length here, that is a characteristic length for the problem. And this is the length in which the heat needs to travel on the conductive side. So we have here, in our case with the rod, it would be the radius, but because we can use, we, we usually talk about characteristic lengths, we call this now just an L here. So just keep in mind the definition that the bio number is a re ratio between two different resistances, namely the thermal resistance inside the body and the convective thermal resistance at the surface. What happens if we look at cases of different biot number? Let's start on the left side. We have here our rod and we look at the temperature profile inside the rod and outside the rod. If the bio number is very small, meaning that either the thermal conductivity is large or the body itself is small, the characteristic length is small, or the heat transfer coefficient on the outside is small, we are here in this case here. And in this case, the um, thermal resistance inside the body can be neglected and the temperature is homogeneous or nearly homogeneous inside the body and the entire temperature drop occurs outside. Now let's go to the other side. And here on the other side, we have a large bio number, meaning that alpha is large compared to the thermal conductivity. Thus, the, the temperature drop occurs mainly inside the body and outside the body, the temperature is nearly homogeneous. Now, if we are in an intermediate regime where the bio number is approximately one, the temperature drop inside and outside the body are of the same order and we cannot neglect one of the two effects. In fin problems, and that's a topic where we are currently in, the bio number is usually small. This means that we can make a one-dimensional approach for the temperature inside the cylinder and we can, in our energy balance, only account for the conductive heat flow into this element and out of the element as well as the convective outflow in the infinitism element dx which is then dq alpha. So that is what we use if we develop any type of fin equation. Now if we are in the other case that the bio number is equal to 1 or the bio number is very large then we are in a two-dimensional problem so we have to make a balance in two or three dimensions as you can see here with a heat flow in x direction going in and going out and a heat flow in radial direction also going in and going out. This becomes a little bit more complex and this is not what we usually do if we have fin problems and we develop a fin equation. This is already the end of the video. Let's start or let's end this video with a few questions. So what information does the bio number provide? The bio number as a ratio between two resistances provides information of what resistance dominates the problem. 
Now, which assumption may be made for bio much smaller than one? In case that bio is much smaller than one, the temperature inside the body is nearly homogeneous in the direction that we look at, for instance, the radial direction. It does not mean that the temperature in the entire body is constant because the bio number, for instance, in the rod problem is defined by the radius, not by the length. This can have a severe difference. Now, for a classical fin problem, is the bio number usually high or low? And in this case, we have to check, uh, assume for the development of the fin equation that the temperature in the radial direction is nearly homogeneous, which then means that the bio number is small. So, in fin questions, please always check if the bio number is small and if you can use and apply the fin assumptions. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.